What is up guys and welcome back to Bottled in Bond. Today we are headed back to Scotland. Scotland seems to be my favorite country. Well, not really. But anyways, we're going back to Scotland. We want to try a uh, pretty good scotch that I've been eyeing for a while. The Brewicladic. Brewladdy. Brewgladdic? Brewladdy. I've heard it mentioned many different ways. The, the Brugladic uh, Distillery has a different series of expressions that they've released throughout the years. One of the ones that I was eyeing previously was the Classic Lottie and by far was, was amazing. It was a great whiskey, but there's an, another one that I was eyeing for a while now, and that is the Isla Barley 2011. Bam! So this one is the Brugladic Brulati Bruick Aladic. It's the Brulatic uh, Isla Barley 2011. Um, so here's my thing. Uh, Brugladic is known for its peat. Obviously, it's from the Isle of Isla, and the salty, briny water that they use, it's, it gives their whiskey, amongst many other Isla distilleries, a unique taste. And then when they smoke it, smoke the barley with the peat bogs, it just enhances that that peated that smoked that cheesy that musty and you know briny and very intense smoke flavor to the whiskey this one is supposed a non peated whiskey it is a non peated dram that we're about to have today the price point on this can range uh i want to say i picked this up for either 60 or 65 it could range between 60 to 70 bucks more or less this is the isla party 2011 although we are in 2020 to my knowledge this was uh aged for only six years and from what i know is about six years in ex bourbon cask and wine casks so it's a combination not too sure of what amount of years was in ex bourbon cask and which one was in wine cask if you do know the answer to that let me know in the comments below so it, they mark it pretty fairly clear here. It is an unpeated whiskey. I want to say that this is a, yes, it is a 50% alcohol by volume. So we're looking at 100 now, right? Um, I don't know that much when it comes to this whiskey. I was told that they don't malt their own barley, so they source it. And it is a combination of different barleys that they, uh, they uh, like to experiment with, right? So I'm not going to keep you guys waiting. I'm just as curious to find out what this is packing, how it compares to other unpeated whiskeys, such as the Bunahaben and the Classic Lottie, this one. There's a few different ones from Isla that are unpeated and they do pack a different flavor, yet they still keep that salty, briny taste to them, which is a good thing. You still pick up those sweet notes as well. So let's open this baby up. Very wet cork. <sighs> the dram. This is a uh, pretty nice bottling that they got going on here. I love I love Brugladi. They they they're they're very unique when it comes. They're Octomore. They're Octomore bottles. That's a uh, it's a really nice looking bottle. Cool, cool, cool. Rockside Island, Melindry Starch Milk. Farm. Oh, so this is this actually is telling you the different barley. Um, I want to say this is telling you where they're sourcing the different barleys. Six aged years and old cast distilled in 2011, bottled in 2018. Good to freaking know. Cool rocks. Oh, that's pretty cool. So the bottle does have, and I'll, I'll show it here on the screen, but it does have the uh, different locations of the uh, barley that they actually sourced it from. Oh, yeah. This is, this is such a delicious smell. So believe it or not, initially, besides that, that warm, uh, dark honey note that I'm getting, initially it's like a yeast, like a bread, like a honey bread, very nutty smell in the nose. I'm getting walnut, I'm getting uh, like a very woody, uh, I stated I'm getting that honey. So far, nothing about this smells smoky or briny or salty. Uh, ashy or nothing like that to be honest I'm getting a dark heavy honey note with a little bit of wood and maybe like a you know 
heavy on the walnut as well. Very slight sprinkle of uh, some kind of an herbal note to include mint. This reminds me of Christmas. <laughs> there's something about this whiskey, there's something about this, this uh, brulati uh, that everything about it, the wood, the walnut, the nutty fragrance that it's giving, the honey, um, a little bit of that mint, a little, maybe a little herbal. It just, it reminds me of uh, just the holidays, to be honest, it's pretty good. On the nose, it's pretty good. I'm not gonna continue trying to pick up any more notes on the nose. Very eager to taste it, so cheers. This reminds me of something. It's good. It's it's great. Man, this reminds me of something. Slightly similar to the classic Lottie, but there's something in there that's just better, maybe. You have those classic, hmm, you have those classic scotch notes. And, oh, hold on, a little cinnamon, still picking up that honey, still picking up that wood, man, and it is smoky too, so this is some kind of a combination, in my opinion, between different, so this is the first time that I, I try this, and it reminds me of monkey shoulder, it reminds me of the classic Lottie, it reminds me a little bit of the Singleton, it reminds me a little bit of the Glenlivet 12. It, it's a combination. I don't know if that has to do with the combination of barley that was used or, or what or how they are sourcing this and how many different barleys they're experimenting with, but this, listen, my opinion, uh, this is better than a classic lot. They, they range for about the same when it comes to the price point. Let's, one more, shall we? The ex bourbon cask, in my opinion, didn't do it much justice. I feel like the ex bourbon cask just gave it that, that light honey note on the palate, at least on the nose is a little bit more prominent, but on the palate, it was like a light honey note and a little maybe woody. But then the, the uh, wine casks, the X wine casks, that maybe gave it so much more of a robust flavor. It gave it more of a sherry, more of a cinnamon, more of a citrusy, more just different distinct notes that you tend to come, you tend to expect from a good scotch. And the Brook Lottie 2011 Isla Barley really is packing a punch when it comes to scotch and how it competes to other distilleries, especially considering the fact that it's coming from Isla and you're expecting peat and you get none of it. Nowhere near close to other distilleries that age their whiskey either in the lowlands or um, the uh, Isla uh, or, you know, more the, the saltier, more brinier regions when it comes to the water and maybe lack thereof of using peat bogs, but this one does not compare to that. This one has its own notes, almost like a Highland or a Speyside whiskey. And to be honest, if this was a Highland or a Speyside whiskey, in my opinion, it trumps a good majority of those whiskeys from up there. It's not as sweet as other whiskeys that I have had, but on every other note that you pick up, Besides the sweetness, like I said, the honey is not so much there on the palate. It's just a little dash of honey, but everything else, hmm, grapes, apple, it's good. It's really good. If you guys have had the Brook Lottie Isla Barley 2011 from Brook Lottie Distillery, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what whiskeys you think I should be reviewing next here on Bottle of the Bond. This is pretty damn good. I'm Ozzy. This is the Brook Lottie 2011 Isla Barley from the Brook Lottie Distillery in the Isle of Isla. And this is Bottled and Bond. Cheers.